Hello, hello, and welcome to The Station Tapes on 21 Soul. I'm your host, Lewis Marks, and on this podcast, I share intimate interviews with some of the best musicians in the world. In my role at rope dope Records, I interview each artist as we prepare for a new release. I want to get the backstory, a sense of their intent, their motivation around their new record. I found that given the opportunity in a relaxed setting, they feel free to open up about musicianship, life, and the challenges of being a professional musician. Tonight on the show, wow, Mr. Eddie Palmieri. This is one of those moments where I stand incredulous at my own luck. That I would ever have a chance to speak personally with such an icon is frankly outside my perception. I only prepared one question, as I often prefer to improvise, and Mr. Palmieri taught me lesson after lesson in a short 30 minutes. Before we begin, I must say that I believe this man has assured his place in history in a way that we don't yet fully understand. To me, that's the mark of a true genius. music that's coming out this year there there are, the first record is a uh, full circle and for people a- outside of the community i want to ask the simple first question and that is what is salsa salsa is a complete misnomer okay uh, these are rhythmical patterns that have their, their own they, they have their own proper names this comes from La Madre Rumba, okay? Rumba was, came into being because when the Moors went into Spain in the year 711, then when the slave trade started, you know, mm-hmm. and I call that, uh, not slave, the whip turned into a slave, but you're a captive when they bring you out of your own country. The main thing is that when the Spaniards brought the Africans, into the Caribbean, the, Carib- the, the inter- intercultural exchange came the mulatto. And the mulatto put the world to dance with his drum. And the first thing they did, the mulatto, was remove the word flamenco, rumba flamenco, which is from Spain. Mm-hmm. And they just kept the word rumba. And rumba got was prejudgment, lower class people, the blacks, mm-hmm. for example. But the word rumba has three derivatives. It has Guaguanco, Yambu, and Columbia. The rest uh, would be El Son, El Son Montuno, El Danzón, El Danzonete, La Guaracha, El Changui, before all of them, El Mambo, El Cha Cha Cha. Cuba was always ahead, it was the umbilical cord of information to us here in the United States, starting from the 20s, the 30s, 40s, but mostly from the 50s to the 60s. That's when they had the greatest ballroom here in the Palladium Ballroom with Machido and his Afro-Cubans, Tito Fuente and Tito Rodriguez. And those were the big three. Mm-hmm. And they ran a, a, a garlic of, of 10 years at the Palladium Ballroom. I came at the tail end, I came in in the Palladium in 63, and I closed it in 66. But the idea that to, to lump all those incredible, precious rhythmical patterns into one word, salsa, the one who answered that the best was Mr. Tito Puente, when he said, I put salsa in my spaghetti, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer for salsa. <laughs> so, you know, over the course of so many years, uh, y- your career is legendary and you're best known, at least from where I sit, uh, as a person who has crossed musical boundaries uh, and blended different styles. Uh, and we saw that so wonderfully in uh, Sabaduria. But what is... What is the purpose and desire to return and, and title this album Full Circle and returning to Salsa 
or well this was it, the full circle comes out of the of of the of doing the apps mm -hmm. you know so when we did the apps then you're using that and putting the album into full circle mm -hmm. and uh I think it's absolutely great, you know, and I appreciate that. These are great compositions, and they had great personnel all the different years that I recorded because I always had the best percussionists, the best horn players that existed because that's the, that's the only way I can get the word excellence is by having superior musicians that give you quality. Yeah. And that you saw that in Sabiduria. That's the greatest Latin jazz album, danceable, ever recorded, in my opinion, with a personnel that is completely frightening. And I, I don't believe I will ever do another Latin jazz LP. I couldn't equal or, pass or uh, surpass it, Wow, in my opinion. So, so I did want to ask you about that. How do you um, encounter and select? Uh, I mean, we, we, we know some of the great names and their history and, and their, their seasoned, seasoned, frightening players, as you, as you point out. But how do you find what you call the young guns and, and, and bring them into the fold? Uh, you know, I see Lucas and... Uh, and uh, Louis Fouché. Yeah. So how, how, do, how do you come across those people? How do you find them? No, they find me. Ah. And, that, and, that, and that, the way that happens is, I would say I'm the Hispanic uh, Art Blakely with the jazz messages. Mm -hmm. You know, they always came, you know, they came down to see Art Blakely and they, everybody was trying to get into the messengers. And that's the way that happened, for example. With me, it's always been the same. When I was in uh, 1958, in fact, 1956, I, got, I started with Vicentico Valdez. Vicentico Valdez was the singer of Tito Puente when my brother Charlie Palmieri uh, was in that same orchestra. Mongo Santa Maria in the same orchestra. Uh, Manny Oquendo in the same orchestra. Amazing, a conjunto that they had. Conjunto meant like there's no saxophones. Only the Machido Orchestra had saxophones. Mm -hmm. So I joined that orchestra in 58, and this is where I learned the Cuban structures of music more intensely than I ever knew before. Uh, and, and that came from my help from uh, Mr. Manuel Kendall, who brought me at that time 2578, 2578 records of different orchestras in Cuba. And that just made it possible. So when I eventually started my own orchestra, I certainly knew the, you know, the musicians all around me because then after that, I did two years with Tito Rodriguez. And I knew the, the best musicians and the best percussionists. And little by little, they just, got, they just keep coming in. It's like a revolving door of great, great talent. They have to come to this orchestra and, and it's very rewarding for them in their career when they leave. Yes. Do, do you give, uh, do you give uh, 25 records to the Young Guns when they, when they arrive? No, no, no. They're, they're on their own. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to. Just listen to my records and they, got, and they get it all in one scope. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I, am, I, am, I am so amazed i watch a lot of performers uh you know these are the times when people can perform their entire lives you know uh i i grew up in in the in the 60s and 70s and and it it, it always seemed like there was some sort of timeline on your career kind of thing but nowadays it seems like people play on and on and it's wonderful but i think a lot of people are repeating themselves uh a lot of elder musicians and, and, and I'm not getting that sense with you at all. Like there's a sense of power and vibrancy that just knocks me over every time. And, and I, what's the secret? Oh, thank you, sir. How, how are thank, you? Thank you. For, go ahead. How are you playing like you're 25 years old still? Well, because of these young players that are on demand and they're, they're a stimuli to me. I have, I have them corral in the sense that <clears throat> the direction so that they know what the essence of a, re a true 
a dance orchestra. Remember, we have the two orchestras. We have the Latin jazz, and then we have the Afro-Caribbean big band, you know, mm-hmm. and that's with the three sax, the three trombones, three trumpets, two trombones, and my singer, Herman Oliveira, and that, and then the tres player, that's a Gonzalez. That's, that becomes the monster orchestra. You know, that orchestra is, is, is of not anybody out, out of any bandstand on the planet. You couldn't care what genre, because the idea is that the way they play what they call salsa music now and all that, mm-hmm. that is completely opposite to what the music that I play, which is the correct way to play, that you keep getting it, the orchestra swells and what you're reaching for is tension and resistance. Mm-hmm. Tension and resistance, just like in sex, is an orgasm. But mm-hmm. in music, it, it's to get a rhythmical and harmonic major musical climax. And I, I make sure that that's in all my compositions and in my arrangements. Or whoever arranged for me, I should you know what to tell them that I want, uh, and, and I always get it. So that tension and resistance is what excites, which means, and the only way you can generate that is you hear a piano solo, and then I'll give it to one of the percussionists, and as he's doing that, we're accompanying him, and then the orchestra comes like in a full tootie, and that's gonna blow everybody away if you're on the dance floor. Man. That's that's the that's the ideal way to to have an exciting Latin dance orchestra, in my opinion. No orchestra in this planet plays the way we play. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could hear it. First of all, if you put on the Latin stations, you know, the commercial stations, you know, which I cannot do, like mm-hmm. that just gives me algebra, you know. <laughs> so the reason is, all you hear is the the singer, the the the, the harmonic structure of the arrangements are in in any which way it, 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 exciting to me because the lack of investigation by the arrangers, in my opinion, they don't go for the, the extensions and for the variations that you can do with a theme. So what happens is you don't have a piano solos, you don't hear bass solos, you don't hear conga solos, you don't hear bongo solos, you don't hear tin band solos. All you hear is a young singer singing, and uh, and I always recommend that if you're gonna go dancing to one of these bands, you should bring some of those two little pillows now that my pillow makes, you know, the traveling pillows, because <laughs> you and your partner are gonna fall asleep dancing on the dance floor. <laughs> and I'm in a good mood today. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or I'll just take a nap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. So uh I, I wanna I want just a little exercise here. Like if you can kind of what's a day what's a day in the life of uh of the maestro Eddie Palmieri? What walk me through Well what, today today I'm I'm ready to finish off one of the recordings called Broken Home, which I did in the original uh, uh, Harlem River Drive. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that was the free form that I had played at that time because Miles Davis had done uh, an album called uh, In Silent Way. Yeah. You know, and then he did uh, 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 Bitches Brew. And that kind of free form, I really, you know, uh, loved it because I could comprehend it, you know. And so I did one. And I never, I had it in, in the can. Mm-hmm. And then, and my brother was playing organ. My teacher, Bob Bianco, that passed away, was playing guitar. Mm-hmm. And then, when I, with the, the lyrics that Calvin Clash bought, A Broken Home, I superimposed the lyrics on that free form. But for this one, I, re- I readjusted the whole arrangement, and it has movement. It's not a free form now. It has, it has a swing tempo, which is going to be very exciting. And I'm finishing it off today. By tomorrow, I, I hopefully, uh, a couple of days, it'll, it'll be finished. I've been working on it for a while. I have plenty of time. 
So I started, you won't believe it, in February, and I did one with about seven, eight score pages. That was the one I hadn't been writing in quite a while. So then I did it again, another arrangement, and I went to, to seven, eight more score pages, and I have uh, a couple of more pages to go, and it's all finished, and I'm very proud of this arrangement, and you'll hear it when we record the Harlem River Drive. Wow, I'm I'm sure, but but I'd like to understand. So when when you when you do that, you did the first score, and you say that wasn't the one, right? I mean, I know, you know, is there something that stands out to you that says this is this is not enough? I gotta I gotta do this again. What's, what's yeah yeah? It's my wife. She used to tell me, find out all the mistakes at home before you go to rehearse and go to the studio. Uh-huh. And I never forgotten that. Before she passed away, she gave me that advice, and she was absolutely correct. Wow, that's a fascinating thing to hear, and I and I hope people can listen um, because so much of today's music feels like people just kind of go in and and wing it a little bit, you know. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, that's what they did. That's what they did in Fania, in the years of Fania when they made famous the word salsa. Yeah, arranges used to do two and three arrangements overnight to come and record the next morning, which was something that, uh, since I'm, I'm an, 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 an uh, orthodox right. arranger, mm-hmm. so it just it takes me time, and time gives me uh, time to experiment, time to use the different harmonic structures, you get exciting intros, and and everything about it, it's it, it, it methodically thought out, uh, which I learned from the gentleman called Joseph Schillinger, which I studied his his, his uh, theory. He was a Russian scientist, mm-hmm. and he calls it. Uh, I see the design of the whole, the whole mm-hmm. composition. I see it mentally. I know exactly what I'm going to do. The only problem is then I have to write it out. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? I so, but I see the whole the design of the whole is there. And then I certainly know how to create that tension and resistance because I was weaned on by the, the different orchestra that I played with. Uh, and then with my first orchestra, La Perfecta, which was uh, a unique orchestra that we knocked everybody off the bandstand with that band too. Yeah. My, you know, one of my questions was going to be, you know, what do you want to say to young musicians? Um, I think part of your your answer to that arrangement question is is a is a good thing for young musicians to know. But is there something else you want to say to young musicians? Well, there's only there's one word that goes along with that. It's called preparation. And right. to get preparation, that means you got to sit down and you got to study. This is no guesswork. You know, music it, it never is never you it's you never learn enough from music every day there's something else that you find out it's all in that in the 88 keys on the piano you just gotta dig it and go find it by having the preparation you know and 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 the understanding of the genre that you're writing in you know and i'm quite mean to that because uh you saw it in in sabiduria that's a true latin jazz what I call Latin jazz, you know, or, or jazz Latin, is when they have just a one percussionist, you know, uh, and a trap drummer, and they don't have the full rhythm section. And then they're, and they're not interested in making anybody dance. Uh, my, my, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially a dance orchestra leader. Mm-hmm. So all my, my Latin jazz compositions are danceable. And the one we just did that you... Uh, been uh, uh, promoting in that, which I want to thank you for that, is uh, the greatest Latin jazz danceable album ever recorded, in my opinion. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. Um, so, so we're moving on uh, this summer. So there's so many things happening. I see you touring and we have Full Circle uh, releasing on July 20th. But then we're leading up to, to another record, uh, Me Luz Mayor. Oh, yeah. You want to... Talk about uh, the title and and uh, the title was given to me by my mother-in-law. She was uh, she was part of her family went back to the Taíno Indians, you know, 
Mm-hmm. My mother-in-law was spiritual, a, a brilliant uh, woman. And she told me that my wife, Idaida, was my major life, me lose my journal. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was going to give that to Celia Cruz to sing it to her husband and that, but we never were able to record together because of the billing. You know, and I told Jerry Masucci, if, we, if we're going to do the album, it's got to say Eddie Palmieri singing the goddess Celia Cruz. Because all her armor was Celia and Johnny, Celia and Billy, Celia and Willie, Celia and Ray, and that wasn't gonna, that wasn't gonna happen to me. So uh, we never were able to record because of the billing situation. Wow. So I kept the composition, the title, just the title, and then I wrote the composition for my wife. Beautiful, beautiful. And and we got the greatest singer. We got the two greatest sonero singers in the world in our genre, which is Gilberto Santa Rosa uh-huh. and Germán Oliveira, never been done before. Two great soneros contemporary on one album. You know, so this album, which to me is the greatest in the 21st century big band of the 20 musicians, uh-huh. you know, to 20, 2022 with the things, whatever it is. And then it's the best musicians in the world because it's the mecca of New York in a recording studio and uh, we paid dearly for it financially we took it to mix in puerto rico then brought it back all we need now is to go to the mastering and it's uh, the album is amazing and then we flew to to los and to las vegas and carlos santana which i knew for a while uh, i used to do uh is his, his manager bill graham used oh, yeah. to call tito puente and myself and when he came to play like in the seaport or something like that, Tito and I would join Carlos. And uh, so he also recorded one composition, which I had recorded in an album called Lukumi Makumabudu, Nikongo. That's my, my spiritual uh, soul. And I'm inviting you to dance with a, with a saint, which comes from a, a, a deity of the Santeria religion called Os- Osain, O-Z-A-I-N. He is the guardian of the woods and everything that grows in the woods. Mm. Like, uh, you know, and, and, and he was the godfather of the name of Chango. And, and this is a, it's a very in- intriguing religious uh, uh, situation because it had catches my interest because it has to do with the drum. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that one is dedicated to uh, two great percussionists. One was called Julito Collazo of Babalao and Francisco Aguabella, Tambolero Mayor. And, I, and, I, and one was from Havana and one is from Matanza, Cuba. So I asked the, the, the deity, uh, Osain, give your blessings to Havana and to Matanza. And that's dedicated, that's the one that Carlos Santana is on. And Francisco Ravella had played with Santana many, many years ago when he started. So it's like, a, again, the revolving door, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and it's funny, as you, it's what, a, what an amazing uh, uh, concept and, and tribute. Um, but it's, you know, I, was, I grew up as a Santana fan, and, I, and I, you know, his respect for the percussion was always evident, regardless of what sort of, commercial style he would do. Um, right. Well, he played here, uh, and when you hear it, it'll blow anybody away. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's, it's a different Carlos Santana when he met Eddie Palmieri in the studio. And I could thank him and congratulate him because he's such a great player. He fell right in like if we were working together always, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Is yeah. that spiritual attachment from one artist to another? Mm-hmm. Wow, beautiful. Well, Mr. Palmieri, again, I, I just can't thank you enough, and thank you again for your time today. Um, we're we're excited about uh, Full Circle on July twentieth, and Milus Mayor on November second, and all the other things that are happening in uh, in your world. Um, is there anything that you would like to say to the world other than the music? Oh, no, no. The, the, my, my music is for the world mm-hmm. to hear. 
And I want to thank you, Lewis Mark, you know, for uh, putting, helping us in the way you, you have with Sabiduria and what you're doing now with the, the, the apps and now and then eventually Meluz Mayol, which is, uh, is just an amazing, an amazing album. And I want to thank you, and I'm very glad that it's in your hands. I'm very proud of how you've been handling uh, uh, our product, and uh, we hope, and I know we have a long career together. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, right. in the Spanish, un abrazo means an embrace. <laughs> uh, thank you. All right, well, you've got thank, to thank you, Louis. and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon in New York. Okay, thank you. Bye. That's our show for today. Thank you for listening to the 21 Soul Music Podcast. If you like what we do, please subscribe. You can find us on Mixcloud, and you can go over to YouTube and find our video series as well. We're also available on Stitcher, iTunes, and wherever else podcasts are found. A uh, big shout out to our producer, Mr. Nick Perry. Our show is recorded in East Philadelphia at the Rope It Room. I want to say thank you to musicians who contribute music to the world and to this podcast. And a big thank you to those of you who have taken the time to listen. We hope you enjoy the show.